Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this video. Uh, my name is Larry Jin. I am on the Microsoft Teams engineering team working on our developer platform. And I'm here to talk to you today about uh, the overall Teams developer platform. I'll be giving you a high-level introduction to the capabilities, walking you through an example, and uh, giving you some ideas about what you can build on the Teams platform. For today's video, uh, what you can expect to take away from an objective standpoint, you'll understand what's possible with the Teams platform. You'll learn about the capabilities, such as bots, tabs, and connectors. And then you'll see an end-to-end -end example that brings it together as an app within Teams. Now, what you should take away uh, in terms of next steps is you really get started with the Teams uh, app platform as part of driving digital transformation. Whether you're dealing with customers, whether you're dealing with partners and ISVs, this content will be relevant for you uh, if you're looking at Teams as a developer opportunity. You'll also want to start checking out our documentation and getting started guide so that you can start building your first app. So let's talk about the Teams platform. It's a key part of the overall product. There are a number of core pillars, communication, collaboration, uh, enterprise grade, security and compliance, but also the ability to customize and extend through the use of third party apps, tools and services. And this is an important part of the product because with apps in, on the Teams platform, you provide users the ability to perform tasks and get things done without context switching, to go and bring content to where those end users are, and to really customize and tailor your teamwork. And you're going to see examples of how you can build an app to get that done. Let's start by talking about the overall platform and its capabilities. There are a number of different ways that you can integrate your service or your solution into Teams uh, across chats, channels, and their personal workspace. We have tabs that allow you to connect rich content. We have conversational bots uh, that allow users to get things done in chats and channel uh, conversations. We have messaging extensions that allow users to query and share content in conversations uh, through structured UI. We have the ability to trigger notifications and alerts we support rich adaptive cards so that you can construct uh, rich custom uh, content inside of conversations. And then lastly, we provide the ability to actually manipulate uh, calling and meeting through our voice and video APIs. And of course, all of this is built on top of the intelligence and the programmability layer of the Microsoft Graph. Now, once you have your app, we provide various ways to distribute and manage your app on Teams. Whether you're an enterprise developer trying to reach uh, employees in your organization, you can publish it to just those uh, end users. Or if you're an ISV looking to commercialize your app, you can publish it to AppSource to make your app available to all Teams end users. And then as an administrator, you're able to assign policy and use rich controls to control, uh, uh, to manage which end users are using which apps and to also govern the experience inside of the Teams client. So let's look at what it takes to actually start building an app. The first step is that you'll use uh, our tool App Studio to actually get started and define your application and all of its capabilities. You'll then see how you can connect your existing service, whether it's a bot or a tab. You can use our graph APIs to automate teamwork as a third step. Next, you can use our uh, voice and video APIs to add rich communications. And then lastly, publishing that app, as I mentioned earlier, either to AppSource or to your organization's app catalog. So let's take a look at that first step. You'll want to begin by thinking about what your use case is. So you want to build an app for Teams. Uh, what's the problem that you're trying to solve? So the goal of your app should be to optimize teamwork by integrating existing workflows or processes or LOB apps into Microsoft Teams. And then you want to take advantage of the Teams canvas and all of the different capabilities that I just mentioned in order to bring it to life. So you can see some examples on the right for different categories of apps that you can build. Whether it's a departmental tool, maybe it's DevOps or for recruiters. Uh, maybe it's an employee resource tool that allows any employee in your organization to access information like benefits, uh, company info, holidays, or even get help desk and support. Maybe you're building a productivity tool for project management, uh, reporting, uh, document collaboration. And then lastly, you know, just as a lot of organizations have built custom workflows on top of email, you can bring a lot of those workflows into Teams for scenarios like approvals and tickets uh, and, and internal routing. 
It's key to remember that when you're building a Teams app, you can enable it for these different contexts. You can enable it for teams and channels so that uh, various members of that team or group can collaborate together and access your app's functionality. You can bring it into private chats, into a one-on-one -on -one or a group chat, uh, into these lightweight conversational contexts. And lastly, you can also deliver your Teams app for personal productivity. So maybe it's a personal dashboard or some user-centric view that's only uh, specific or custom to one user you can do that as well. So we really provide all these different uh, plugs and entry points for your app. And really think about what kind of problem you're solving and which one of these contexts your app would be relevant for. Now to get started, we provide a tool called App Studio, uh, which is basically an app that helps you get, um, uh, create your app and register it, manage your project. So we're going to see in a second how you can use this tool to get started, and it provides a number of different features and tools. You can create and save your app projects so that you can work on them later. You can preview and generate uh, cards so that you can see how your bot or messaging extension is going to deliver cards for your end user. We also provide a control library so that if you want to create a tab or web interface that looks consistent with the rest of Teams, you don't have to go create your own CSS. You can actually take advantage of ours. And then lastly, we also provide really, really easy way of sideloading and testing your app so that you don't have to go and manually download the manifest and sideload it. We provide uh, that one-click functionality inside of App Studio. And then, of course, uh, recently we made it much easier for you to manage your bot. So if you're trying to integrate with the bot framework in your app, you don't have to go and uh, manage the credentials separately and the endpoint settings. You can actually do all of that within App Studio. So let's hop over and take a look at an example. So we're going to start out here in Visual Studio. I have a very simple project. This is just a web application uh, that we have. And it's basically a web page that is written in HTML. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this web experience and we're going to package it as a very simple tab inside of uh, Microsoft Teams. Now what you'll see here is that we have the basic web content, so it's just hello world and HTML. But we also have here a basic script tag that integrates with the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK. So think of this as, uh, for those that have built Office add-ins in the past, um, what you're doing is you're going to embed this content inside of Teams, and then you're going to use our JavaScript library in order to integrate with the Teams context. Now you can see here that I'm able to retrieve basic context like the user's uh, UPN, which is typically their email address, as well as their theme and locale information. So let's go back into Teams here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use App Studio to actually show how do you create and package this app. So I'll jump into the manifest editor. I already have this app created, so let's just take a quick look at what all the different fields are. This is where you provide the basic information about your app, the name, description. You can use this tool to generate a unique identifier, some basic developer info, uh, links, and then the icon. Now, this simple app just has one capability, which is a tab. And you'll see here that we have a personal tab. So I mentioned earlier that you can deliver your app into either uh, a team, a chat, or a personal context. So for this example, we just have a basic personal tab. And if I click Edit, you'll see that I provide the name of the tab, Entity ID, which is a unique uh, identifier that's relevant for my app, and then a content URL. This content URL uh, is how Teams knows how to load and resolve your tab content at runtime. So let me make sure that this is running inside of Visual Studio. So you'll see that this page loads in Edge, so this is running. And you'll notice here that all of these fields are undefined because it's not being hosted inside of Teams right now. So if I go back into Teams, now what we'll do is, now that we have the basic definition of the app, we're going to go and test it by sideloading inside of Teams. So under Test and Distribute, I'll click Install. This will bring up the dialog to install this app in Teams for personal use. 
I'll go ahead and click that. And this will navigate me to the personal app. Now this is the tab that will load the content that we just saw. And you'll see here that it shows the content that we saw, but it also shows that team context I mentioned. So it has the UPN, it has the user's theme, uh, which is the default theme right now for um, uh, regular light, light background, and then the locale, which is English US. So you can see how easy it is to get started with your app by using App Studio to create your package, um, creating that first tab just by taking your existing web content, bringing it into Teams, and enhancing it using our SDK, and then uh, packaging it and deploying it inside of Teams uh, in order to test it. So now that you've got your very, very basic example, the next step is to do something a little bit more sophisticated by connecting either existing web application content or, very popularly, adding a bot. So you can connect your bot service in order to do uh, one of two different things. You can either bring it in to work with the user through natural language. This is what people uh, typically associate with chatbots. You can bring that into a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you, you can interact with your user through one-on-one. -on -one. You can bring it into a group chat, or you can uh, bring it into a channel conversation. We also support something called messaging extensions. You can see here in the screenshot. This is a little bit more of a structured way of interacting with your bot. So rather than having pure natural language, the user can actually interact with your bot uh, service through a UI. Now in this case, the Teams client will actually render the UI. And as a developer, all you have to do is implement the backend logic that delivers the responses back in a card format that the Teams client understands. This message extension is also available from the uh, command box, which you can see at the top of the screen, uh, where it says search or type a command. We already saw how you can bring in your existing web content as well via tab. So if you have a more sophisticated web application, uh, it's quite easy to bring that uh, into Teams and integrate it via the JavaScript SDK, as we just saw. Another note, something that we get asked about quite often, is Bot Builder v4 support. So currently, we have the v4 SDK supported uh, for .NET in preview. So there are a set of Microsoft Teams-specific SDK extensions uh, that we provide as part of a NuGet package in .NET that allows you to take advantage of various Teams-specific concepts and APIs alongside the core uh, bot logic using Bot Builder v4. We have Node.js support coming soon, and Java and Python are on the backlog. Now, when you're building your bot or your message extension, you'll want to craft um, a richer experience through flexible layouts, and adaptive cards is how you achieve that. So we fully support the adaptive card spec, and you can render your experience with an adaptive card on the team's web, desktop, and mobile clients. And it's great because what this allows is for your bot to deliver experience to enable quick interactions and task completion. And this really, uh, it's very powerful, especially on iOS and Android, where for end users, rather than having to go to a separate experience, they can use the bot to go get those really bite-sized interactions done. Another fantastic thing that we have in the platform is the ability to use the SharePoint framework to build a solution and then to bring that into Microsoft Teams as a tab. Now, for developers who are familiar with SPFX, it's a, solution, uh, it's a framework that allows you to build and host uh, a web application on top of the SharePoint platform. So you don't have to go to an external hosting solution like Azure. You can have everything, including your JavaScript, HTML, CSS, hosted in SharePoint and then deploy that solution to your organizations and users. Now, if you're coming from SharePoint, you'll already know that uh, your end users can then construct rich pages uh, based on those SharePoint framework web parts. Now we would, what we allow is to bring those solutions into Teams as well as a tab. You can see an example here in the screenshot where that same uh, web part experience manifests as a channel tab in Teams. Another great feature of the platform is something that we call task modules. Now think about a task module as really a custom pop-up. Effectively, whether it's inside of a tab or from a card or via message extension, you can launch one of these pop-up experiences and host your custom content inside of it to allow the user to complete a workflow. 
Now that information inside of the tab could be powered by an adaptive card, as you can see in this example here, or it could actually embed your custom web content. So let's say that you have a embeddable uh, web page with forms and other business logic on it. You can bring that in inside of Teams as a task module. So now let's see a demo of how we can bring all of this together. I'm going to jump back into Teams and go back to App Studio. Going back to the Manifest Editor, we already have this app that I created before, Contoso HR. So this is a sample app that we built um, for an example line of business application scenario where, you know, as a recruiter or as a manager, you might want to um, manage candidates in the pipeline, create and view positions, and really just kind of coordinate the entire recruiting process from within Teams. So this is an app that has uh, various bot, tab, connector, and messaging extension cap functionality. So it's a more sophisticated version of that simple app uh, that we saw earlier. So you can see here all of the basic uh, information that we provide, defining the app. And, and as we go through the capabilities, you'll see how these are declared. So we have various personal and team tabs. So here we have a channel tab that is pointing to a hosted version of this app on Azure. And we also have a couple of personal tabs as well. Under bots, we have a bot defined, and it has a number of these commands. I'll skip over the connectors and go straight to the message extension. Similarly, we have a message extension uh, that allow the, allows the user to uh, search and uh, create positions. So I'm going to jump over to a team of mine, go to one of the channels. And I'll just click the plus here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a channel tab for this sample HR app. So you notice here that we have this Contoso Talent app. And now I can configure that tab. So I'll call this tab name Senior SDE. Click Save. And now it's going to load that tab inside of this channel. And so in this example, what I have is a dashboard that shows me, for a particular position, all of the applicants uh, and sort of where they are in that hiring pipeline. And you can imagine this would be applicable to any number of scenarios where you want to bring in your custom content into a channel for a team-based collaboration. So um, outside of HR scenarios, maybe it's uh, tickets uh, for incidents that, are, um, that originated from customers. Maybe it's a, um, a sales dashboard, or it could be some kind of reporting visualization uh, experience where you want to show custom data. And because this is just web application content, you're, you're not limited by any particular framework or technology. If I go back in the conversation here, you'll see how the messaging extension allows me to post and collaborate around cards uh, with my coworkers. So if I click on this overflow here, and I click on the Contoso Talent Message Extension. So what I can do here is I can run a couple of the commands that I defined earlier in the manifest. I can either search existing positions, and I can insert that as a card. Similarly, I can also search for candidates. But what I can also do is I can also create a position and initiate a workflow here. So you'll notice that this brings up an inline uh, pop-up. Uh, this is the task module that I mentioned earlier. Inside of this task module, um, I've bound custom fields through JSON, uh, defining all of the forms that the user has to fill out, including title, level, uh, when this should be posted, the location, and description. Now, because this is an adaptive card, I have access to all of the different form, uh, rich form types that are available through the adaptive card schema. So that includes number picker, uh, inline text, multi-select, um, uh, among others. Now I'll show you the personal uh, side of the interaction with that app.
So over here in the Contoso Talent Personal app, you'll notice that I have the chatbot interaction. I have this personal tab that shows me a list of candidates. And then there's an about page that we generate that contains basic information about this app. So if I type a question to the bot, I can uh, obviously ask it for help, which isn't particularly interesting. You can see the text response here. I can list all the open positions, and that'll re return a list of elements. I can also open a new job position. Looks like my bot's having a minor bug in there, so that's how you know it's actual code. And so if I click on New Job Posting, you'll see that the bot returns uh, one of these cards where I can uh, perform inline actions. But if I click Open Form, you'll notice that this will also launch into one of those task module experiences that we just saw with the message extension. So what's great about this is that um, you can think about the platform as having all of these different ingredients and different components. And as a developer, you're able to stitch all of these together to create an end-to-end -end experience um, that can achieve a number of different tasks for your end users. So I won't go too deep into this, but I'll show you how these pieces came together. So hopping into Visual Studio, this is uh, where all of the logic for my bot resides. Uh, so there will be other videos that go into far more detail about how you can bring your bot to life uh, for Teams, but I'll just quickly run through the anatomy of it. So, at the high level, we have a very basic class here that, uh, oh, that's not the right one. Let me go find it. This is the one. So this is the class that processes all the incoming requests from the user. So whenever the user sends a message or uh, requests one of those task modules or uses the messaging extension, this class handles those requests. And you'll see that depending on the type of user request, it'll route it to various different classes to process it. So if the user is using the messaging extension, we pass it into this invoke controller class. If the user is uh, typing a, user, uh, a message, it'll pass it into this dialog. So I'll just open up this dialog so you get a sense of how the processing works. Now, this dialog is pretty dumb. It doesn't use Lewis.ai or any other natural language technologies. All it's doing is basic uh, string parsing to understand what command the user is issuing. So if the user is looking up positions or trying to create a new position or open or existing candidates, you'll see that the code is basically just doing some simple string processing. And then once the bot processes the command, it's going to return uh, um, the response back to the end user. And so we have some helper methods like send candidate details message, which basically takes a request to find a particular candidate. It gets that data from the back end and then it sends back a card uh, representing that uh, candidate. And you can see here that we have helper classes and methods for constructing adaptive cards uh, to make it a little bit easier for you to process and uh, manipulate that JSON. So this is a very handy cheat sheet uh, that I like to give to people to kind of see all the different extensible uh, features and capabilities of the platform. So hopefully through that demo, you see how all these different pieces come together for your app with tabs, bots, cards, and commands. Now that you've seen how to connect your existing service uh, with a bot or a tab into your app, now let's see how you can leverage the Microsoft Graph in order to automate teamwork for your solution. There are a lot of really common scenarios when using the Graph with Teams. Uh, we have APIs dedicated towards a number of different functions, whether you're setting up a team, like provisioning it, um, defining the basic properties, creating channels, managing membership, and installing apps and configuring tabs. With ongoing collaboration, you can also use our APIs to uh, manage the members, manage channels, and age them out if they're no longer needed. And then you can also use our APIs when everything is done to read out the channel messages, query the files, and even mark the team as archived. So with the graph, we provide a set of APIs for you to complete that entire end-to-end uh, -end life cycle of the team and automate every step along the way. You can, of course, leverage the full breadth of the graph in your app uh, with Office 365 resources like email, calendar, people, sites, 
files, devices. But as I mentioned earlier, we have a dedicated set of APIs for Teams. And so under the Teams resource, we have APIs dedicated for team management, channels, members, apps, tabs, threads, and messages. This is an area where you should expect to see more APIs coming down the pipeline in the future as we create more opportunities to automate teamwork. Here's a quick summary of all of the APIs that are available today. As I mentioned earlier, there are a number of APIs that are already in production in V1. And we have some APIs that are there in beta, and those will be moving into V1 as they mature and get production ready. And of course, new APIs will be available in the future as well. Here's a quick example of what it might look like if you were to query channel messages. This is a high-level structure. Uh, it'll give you back an array of these message objects. And inside of every message, you'll be able to get metadata, like who sent it, uh, the, the timestamp, the ID, but also rich content, like the actual body of the message, the attachments, uh, mentions, and reactions, and emojis. What's great about this API is that you can use it for a variety of different purposes. Uh, maybe you're auditing the usage of teams in your organization. Maybe you want to read the messages out so that you can archive them. Or maybe you want to do some intelligent real-time processing as users are collaborating uh, in Teams. So all of these are possible now with this API, which is available in beta and will be going to production shortly. The next opportunity uh, for you when building a Teams app is to add rich communications. So in addition to tabs and bots and all these different integrations from a messaging standpoint, you can also add vi voice and video uh, to interactions with your app. So under the Microsoft Graph, what we've done is we've created a set of APIs that allow you to programmatically manipulate voice and video. There are some really, really cool use cases with this. Um, the two main ones are calling bots and backend uh, calling services. So with a calling bot, what you can do is you can extend your existing messaging bot to place calls with users, receive calls, or even play media when someone is dialed in. You can either play remote media or local media. Remote media is basically an existing file that you want to play. So maybe it's some pre-recorded or pre-canned uh, audio. And local media is actually, if you're processing the media stream real time, and you might want to do something like real time translation um, or uh, transcription and, and play that back. You can also manipulate uh, meetings. So if your bot is added to a meeting, it can programmatically uh, manipulate the participants, and it can actually add people in as necessary. This is really cool if you're building a bot that can help uh, automate uh, meeting workflows, if you need to programmatically pull people in based on various business rules. Um, uh, one example use case could be something like incident management, or if you need to notify a large number of users through voice uh, if there is uh, something important happening. You can also build a back-end cloud service that use our APIs to kind of seamlessly manipulate the call or meeting and hook into the call controls. So examples of that could be customer care, things like contact center solutions, uh, IVR, uh, voice recording, transcription. Here's a summary of the high-level capabilities of the voice and video platform. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you can manipulate the call uh, and perform call control operations. You can in integrate directly with the media. Uh, there are various uh, network intelligence features built into the platform. And then lastly, you can also leverage cognitive services, whether it's speech to text or some of the translation services that are available through Microsoft. This is a summary of the available APIs under Microsoft Graph. And what's cool about this is we've taken some really complex calling workflows, and we've modeled them through uh, traditional RESTful patterns in the Microsoft Graph APIs. And so you can see here across these various scenario categories of basic calling, group calling and meetings, and IVR, all the different operations that you can perform, whether you're placing a call, receiving it, transferring, managing meeting participants, or um, playing audio prompts and cap capturing DTMF tones. We also provide a number of SDKs and technologies to facilitate and simplify building your uh, calling application. 
So right now, this is primarily targeted at .NET and C-sharp developers. But the idea is that rather than to have to integrate directly with the REST APIs, we provide these SDKs to make it easier for you to build a calling media bot. And we have some available samples online in our documentation site if you want to check those out and get started with building a calling bot. Now, the last step, once you have your app and you've connected your services and you've integrated with Graph and calling in meetings, is to publish it. We offer two main options for distribution. If you're building an app and you primarily uh, and you want to actually make it available for all end users of uh, Microsoft Teams, you can publish it via the seller dashboard to AppSource. This will make it show up in the global Teams catalog in our in-client store, and soon we'll actually make it uh, we'll make it possible for you to submit your app via the Partner Center. So we will be moving away from Seller Dashboard to the Microsoft Partner Center to go and publish your app package. Now, if you just want to make your app available for end users within your organization, we provide the tenant app catalog. So as an IT administrator or someone with the proper permissions in your organization, you can take that app and you can upload it to make it available just for employees of your company. You can do this either through the Teams UI or via available uh, graph APIs. From a management standpoint, the new Office 365 admin portal is how you, taking on more of an IT admin role, can actually go and manage uh, various policies for your end users. So we provide three basic classes of policies. These are uh, rolling out with some of these already being available. One is granular permissions management. So if you want to manage which users in your organization get access to which apps, whether they're third party or line of business apps, we provide that through the uh, Teams Admin Center. We provide something as well called app setup policies. So let's say that you want to um, take the Trello app and make that available, uh, not just available to your end users, but actually pre-pinned to the app bar experience in Teams. You can assign a policy that makes that the default for a number of users in your organization. And then lastly, you can also lock down which users in your organization can uh, develop, test, and sideload apps into your organization. So let's say that you're working with a, a large company and you want to control and only have, let's say, 20 developers in that organization have the ability to test and sideload, you can assign a user policy to govern that as well. So let me show an example of that policy. So this is the Microsoft Teams and Skype for Business Admin Center that you just saw the screenshot of. And on the left here, you'll notice that in addition to the other policies like users, meetings, calling, and messaging, we also have a policy, a set of policies for Teams apps. Right now, what we have um, available in the product is app setup policies. So as I mentioned earlier, you can specify these policies to govern which apps are uh, pre-pinned to the app bar in the user's Teams client. You can see here with this example policy for this organization that we have these basic apps pinned. So what's cool about this policy is that you can not only govern which third-party apps appear on the app bar for your end user, but you can even manage which built-in workloads show up and which don't. So in this case, we have the core workloads like Teams, Calendar, Calling, and Files. But you could also manage this policy and you can move things around. So I can actually even change the order of these apps. And of course, I can add more from all the, the available third-party apps. So if I wanted to add Trello, you can add that to this policy. So hopefully now you've seen all of the different facets of the Microsoft Teams platform, and you've gotten an overview of the different capabilities and how apps come together, and how you can manage and distribute them for your organization. There are a lot of other uh, great content and uh, available resources online for you to check out in order to get deeper into building your first Teams app. You can go to ak.ms Teams Developer to check out the Teams Dev Center, where you'll, where you'll be able to see some examples. Check out our training and tutorials and as well look at our documentation. We have a developer support program under ak.ms Teams Dev Support where uh, if you want to stay up to date on new announcements and new features or if you just need help and you're stuck on a particular stage of building your app. And of course we have a full-fledged set of docs 
that not only introduce the platform and key concepts, but also, also go deep into technical concepts and have API references. We well, hope you enjoyed this uh, session and you learned a lot about what it takes to build a Teams app. And I hope this has sparked some ideas of what you can achieve on the Teams platform. Thank you and have a great day.